Hi, Sonia Clark here, business coach, consultant and trainer. Just asking a question, do you feel sometimes that you are not communicating really well or effectively with your clients? Do you feel that sometimes things get a little bit misconstrued and afterwards after a process has happened, you go, oh, what happened there? Whether it's with your clients or with your staff or with your customers, with your stakeholders, that's all around communication. Now, when it comes to communication, there's a, a particular model that was put together by Albert Mohebri, and I can get a little bit uh, misdrewed with his surname there, sorry, but it's the 738 and 55% uh, rule. So 7% is just the words we use, the actual specific words that we actually use, which formulate to our effectiveness with our communication. So 38% is tonality. So that's tonality of voice as well as intent. A lot of people miss the intent part. And then when it comes to the remainder being 55%, that's actually nonverbal. So nonverbal is body language. We are human beings. We communicate a lot better face to face than what we do just over the phone or just on an email. We've all experienced that. So when we're communicating with our customers, our clients, our end users, our stakeholders, all the various different components uh, that are part of business with managers, with staff, with VAs, virtual assistants, we are doing all sorts of forms of communication and business uh, fundamentals teach us that we really need to back everything up in writing. Sure, not a problem. We tend to be communicating a lot via that writing. So that's a lot in emails and things like that. That is 7%. I know. <laughs> when I came across the model, I'm like, oh my gosh. Because 38% is the tonality or the tone of that written format or the tone when you're actually having to talk to people over the phone. A lot of the times we are encouraged, we've sort of gone through trends of where when we have picked up the phone to interact with our clients and customers and when we haven't. And we are encouraged at the moment, you know, pick up the phone. Uh, we are in the conversation age now. We've come from the, the information age into the conversation age, but a lot of the conversation age is into the text messaging, let alone if you're talking text, you know, words there, and that's different to um, my old way that I <laughs> learned. So, you know, that 7% is probably cut down to 5%. And then everything else is 38%. We're cutting out the 55% that us as a human being, we really do need when we're looking at how to fit and to connect. And that comes down to the mirror neurons and mirroring how we fit and how we know when when some people say, I just feel it, it sits, sits with me in my gut, I'm, I'm just feeling it. You know, that's working with uh, the neuroscience and with our subconscious mind as well as our conscious mind as well as our mirror neurons as to whether we fitting with each other or not. Is any mirroring happening? And that is your nonverbals. So when, you may have heard, when people have been, uh, talking, communicating, training, whatever it is, from passing on information from one person to another and it's been face to face, uh, people say, look, you know, that meeting was really great. That was a whole lot more effective than even just being over the phone. A lot of people say, look, I just want to meet you. You know, what is it that drives people to go, but I just want to meet you? That is that 55% when we're not realizing how strong a fundamental of communication from one human being to another human being is. And that is also part of uh, the need or the necessity that's there for the mirror neurons to have a like-mindedness, to, to feel like we fit and we belong. We just get those feelings, that sense of, you know, is this going to work or not? And can I really understand if that person's getting it? And even when we've, you know, when we've got communication barriers as far as different languages, we can often say, oh, look, if I'm seeing that person, I'll know whether they're getting it or not. That's, that's nonverbal. But some of those uh, different cultures, they might be going, yes, 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 but it's actually no, no, no. Uh, so then it's how you use your questioning and tone of voice 
that will help leverage that 55% with an additional 38% then it's being very selective with our vocabulary with the actual words we use then we can finally add in and leverage that last seven percent and be a whole lot more effective so when we're looking at communicating with our clients customers end users stakeholders internal stakeholders external stakeholders everyone and every, anyone that we're needing to do business with to make things happen from the beginning of a journey for with a customer or end user let's say and to the end all the different people that can tend to be involved with us to help us to deliver that business we really want to try to leverage every single one of those percentages as much as possible so we can feel confident that we were understood really well i have um, had held many different types of job roles in my past always been uh, training people in amongst it all and I have been responsible for um, uh, correcting behavioral so behavioral management conflict resolution all of those sorts of things and a lot of the miscommunication can be so uh, have been cut down early in the piece if the com communication was clear and people can say sure I was being clear but they perhaps weren't uh, leveraging each of those percentages with being clear. And not only do you need to be clear, but you also need to be specific. So you need to be clear, you need to be specific, you need to be leveraging your 7%, no, don't, leave, don't leave it down to 2%. And you also need to be leveraging your 38%. Then if you have the opportunity to put into action your 55%, which is your non-verbal body language, fabulous don't rely on just body language. When I also did retail for a long time, face-to-face -face retail, a lot of people tend to rely on body language. Don't do that. You know, if that's your forte and that's what you're good at, let that be the, the, the icing on the cake. Work on your other skill sets as much as possible. When we're talking body language, we're look, talking about eye contact, we're talking about the, the various different gestures in the face and with the hands, with the body, with the, the breathing that actually happens and watching the chest up, come up and down, with the stance that one takes and how they move around, have the alignment of the shoulders on angles so to, to stop with confrontation until you've come in and uh, they're, they're feeling a whole lot more reciprocative when they're mirroring you. You can test it and, and move and see if they mirror it. If they mirror it, you are now the leader. If they don't mirror it, you go back to that stance. Let them be the leader. Slowly with what you're saying, you need to get into being the leader. That's why, where you need to be when you are in customer service. It's a whole lot more of a, rather than being reactive, it's being proactive. It's being a whole lot more prescriptive. It, uh, no matter what you do, you are always doing customer service. Even if it's just to do panel beating, you are still of service to your end user, your customer. If it's uh, internal and you're working with other colleagues in different departments, you are still being of service to help create something for the end user and you often need to collaborate and negotiate with other people. There's a whole lot that goes on and around that, but at least knowing what those percentages are and be very aware of your tone of voice and where you're putting the emphasis of your up and down uh, and the amount of volume and non-volume, the ends of your sentences. I tend to find that when I've been training with, um, with various different people, that it does tend to be the males that have a little bit more of the lower range rather than um, females tend to have more the middle to upper range. What happens with lower range is that if you start to stay on a monotone too long, the ear isn't hearing the ends of the words or the ends of the sentences. So therefore, there's an opportunity there for miscommunication. You don't want to be doing that. You want to be leveraging your 38%. So what you do need to do is to have a little bit of an up and down with your voice. The same with women who have the middle tone. Uh, if you have the upper tone, uh, you need to bring, emphasize on the down. It's a little bit uh, coming to the pathos, uh, the, the Greek word for storytelling. This is how we learn. This is how information sticks. 
rather than relying it on uh, in an email not everyone reads to the end of the sentence if we've talked to someone if we've actually been able to do face-to-face -face videos we're able to use a little bit more body and the hand gestures then uh, we can emphasize the up and down the information that we're passing on to the other person is going to stick that little bit more that's again another couple of percentages of um, of leverage and we want to be leveraging as much as possible so um, hearing we need to listen twice as much as what we talk uh, it's, a, it's a good old adage I was taught back in the retail days you have two ears and one mouth listen twice as much as what you talk ask questions ask open-ended questions open-ended means that you're not going to get a yes or no as a response so then you can ask lots of information that's going to be leveraging your 38 percent it's going to be getting people into a dialogue with you rather than oh it's you and me and we're just you know giving each other pieces of information and we don't want to take on board what you're saying sort of thing uh, so all of these various things that you can actually do to help leverage each of those percentages I do do deep dives in my um, various courses and trainings uh, which I'd love to share with you because I love uh, I love learning but I also love helping other people I love developing individuals and businesses so think about with your different types of things uh, rewind through this video as far as body language eyes uh, facial expressions gestures hands posture breathing then that comes into that'll make you think of your tone of voice up and down with the ends make sure you also talk and pronunciate your words to the ends of the words so then people can really hear the words uh, and as well as the ends of your sentences and then make sure you're choosing very specific words now if you've got little pauses that's okay don't put too much in there don't use fancy um, words that the end user may or other people may not quite click on with uh, um, with you and who may not know about what your jargon is that doesn't make you look smarter uh, it has really quite the reverse effect be very specific with your words so we've been clear are not in specific and but a lot more clear with the tonality and the body language now to bring in more of an emphasis with being specific because you're only down to seven percent is the specific words you use put little pauses in there one last hot little tip I know I really want to try to keep this short for you but I really love helping you so I'm hoping that you're picking up lots of little um, interesting tips here when it comes to human beings remember I said one person always has to be the leader initially it's going to be the end user or your customer or the other person and eventually because they want you to be leader otherwise they're not going to take it on board they'll go elsewhere you then have to lead so let your leveraging start to, start to work on the various bits of your leverage you'll start to position yourself as the leader uh, and they'll take that on board when you're talking have little pauses there's power in the pause there's power in the pause what happens is when you're talking you're downloading they're listening they're uploading it's now translating what that really means to them and how much they're going to hang on to that and how they're now going to position their download to you all right and when it's going through their translations it's going through their value system to see if they like it or not okay when they then download to you so when you're downloading they're uploading translating you're at a different speed to them there's this whole cycle going on here you are at two different time lengths it's only a small bit but it's a two different time lengths so put some pauses in there it'll help speed up and take on that time length otherwise they're just not going to listen to everything it's better to short talk and shorter sentences have some pauses let it be taken on board and be really seriously clear and specific <laughs> I hope that's helped uh, reach out to me contact me uh, let's talk about uh, requirements that you have for your business and your management I do um, I have two businesses so I have uh, small business uh, coaching for small businesses and I also am part of an organization with that we do training for corporate training 
reach out to me let's chat let's see how I can be of service to you and how I can help you out and um, let's go from there so uh, soniaclark.com details are below and uh, reach out and let's start a conversation okay take care and wish you all the very best bye